you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. Today's daily dose of stupid. Man, they're stupid and then there's just stupid. I mean, our daily dose of stupid is always chock full of stupid. This is one of the dumber ones that I've seen in a while. So this guy might be the worst lawyer in the United States of America. So I'm sure that most of you have heard by this point because it's all over the news and, and rightfully so. Uh, the case of Almud Aubrey, I have no idea if I'm saying that right. Uh, Al Almud, I think, is the way to say it, Aubrey. And it's the jogger who, a uh, former football player, black guy that was just jogging down the road and all of a sudden was accosted by two guys in a truck with the guns. Uh, the guy points the gun at him, tells him to stop. He f has a struggle with the guy trying to get his gun away from him. And then the, uh, the, the kid sadly gets shot and killed, basically murdered by these two guys. Well, it turns out that that video only surfaced, and really that's what brought this story to national attention because of a guy named Alan Tucker, who is a local defense attorney in the area that is friends with the defendants, the, uh, the son and father that wound up killing this guy. So here's the interesting thing. Th this is the video that he wound up leaking. He was the original source that allowed this to go out into the media. And if you haven't seen the video yet, it it's the same video that's been playing for the last couple of days making the news rounds. Here it is. What's really crazy about this, and as tragic as this is that a young man lost his life for evidently really no reason at all, other than the fact that these guys thought he was committing some kind of crime and decided to take the law into their own hands. The really strange thing about this is the defense lawyer who is friends of the defendants, the guys that shot this guy, he's actually the one that leaked it because he thought that somehow that video made them look better? I, I don't really understand how anybody with any level of competence comes to that conclusion. But that seems to be what happened here. So according to Alan Tucker, the, the guy who leaked this, um, he said if Aubrey had just froze and hadn't done anything, he wouldn't have gotten shot. Well, first of all, how do you know that? Because they were shooting at him even before there was a struggle for that gun. You hear very distinctly at least two gunshots. We don't know if it, it hit anybody or what. But they were shooting at him before that took place. And second of all, and this is the, the bigger sticking point with me, he's trying to make this case that this was a citizen's arrest. And just like if you're given a lawful order from a police officer to freeze, if you refuse to freeze, if you refuse to comply with that arrest, the officer can use lethal force in cases if he believes that you're going to be a threat to yourself or somebody else. But that's not what happened here. It has been reported that this guy was a police officer. He was not. He was, uh, he had been connected to law enforcement at some point. He was like a volunteer deputy or something at some point, but he was not at the time that this took place. And he certainly didn't have the authority of law. He's just a regular citizen at the time of this taking place, which actually I think makes it worse because that means this guy should have known better than to try to make a citizen's arrest like this, but let's just dig into that claim, shall we? Let's go ahead and look at citizen's arrest law in Georgia. So this is the, the law in Georgia. Uh, Georgia Code for Criminal Procedure, Title 17, grounds for a citizen's arrest. A private person may arrest an offender if the offense is committed in his presence or within immediate knowledge if the offense is a felony and the offender is escaping or attempting to escape, a private person may arrest him upon reasonable and probable grounds of suspicion. Now, the reasonable and probable grounds of suspicion, that's somewhat shaky in this case as well, but I don't really want to focus on that because I think the other two points that, meet, that have to be met 
to meet the qualification of a citizen arrest are actually more prevalent here. So you'll notice the two things that it said there is that the offense is committed in the person's presence. Well, in this case, it wasn't. Based on the story that we've been told, they heard that this guy was trespassing and going onto somebody else's property, and so they went out and found somebody that met the description of that person. And because of that, and this is actually the same lawyer's own word saying that they saw someone who fit the description of the criminal, yeah, you can't go after people because they meet an APB. That's not something a private citizen can do. Now, I don't have any experience in law enforcement myself. I was a private detective for a little while. Uh, didn't really have a ton of experience even in that. But I've never been a law enforcement official. But even I know that you can't just go out looking for criminals and arrest them and hold them and, and that somehow be something that's legal. You can't just go out trying to track down criminals on your own. That's not a thing that you can do as a private citizen. Police officers can. Citizens can't. And the Georgia law, by the way, reflects that. You have to be in the presence of somebody or be within immediate knowledge of that. In other words, you either have to have, have seen them commit the crime or have direct knowledge from somebody that did like that. That's a pretty high bar to clear, and, and I think that's appropriate so we don't have people just going out basically handing down vigilante justice all willy-nilly. If two guys come up to me, for example and they've got guns, and they tell me, hey, stop, we want to talk to you. Um, no, unless you're an actual police officer, there is no way I'm stopping. In fact, if you do pull a gun on me and I'm unarmed, I do exactly what that guy did. I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to try to get somebody's gun away from them. Because the odds of me surviving if I'm unarmed and they're not are slim to none, so I'm going to take the only chance that I've got, which is to get one of their firearms. And I'm just saying from... From this perspective, I don't see how this attorney looks at that video and goes, oh yeah, this will calm things down. This will definitely make it better. This dude's a moron if he thought that. Like nobody, no reasonable person can watch that video and see what unfolded. And knowing the backstory even makes it worse that they didn't even see this guy commit a crime, that they weren't chasing him down because they, they saw him commit something. You can't do that. You can't hold somebody at gunpoint. That's actually what's known as a false imprisonment which, by the way, is a crime. You see, in this video, even if this guy was criminally trespassing, the people in the truck are the criminals because they were engaged in what's known as a false imprisonment. In fact, it actually technically meets the qualification of a kidnapping because you're holding somebody against their will, but in this case, they were also sort of abducting the person. So it's kind of hard to tell whether it's a false imprisonment or because they were trying a citizen's arrest or a kidnapping, but either way, those guys are actually the criminals in this situation, and that video just lends proof to that. And then here's another thing that you need to consider as well. This is also part of Georgia law. If you'll look at this real quick, this is Georgia Code Title 16, where it states, a person who commits the offense of criminal trespass shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. Huh. Well, you may recall in the law that we just read, for something to constitute a citizen's arrest, it must be a felony. So even if this guy was trespassing, and maybe he was, uh, there's recent video footage to suggest he probably was, even though it doesn't look like he did anything wrong. He just... Uh, kind of wondered upon a construction site, didn't realize what it was. And there are a lot of people going, oh, well, people don't really do that in real life. I'm like, have you never met a dude? We do that all the freaking time. Whenever there's men working, other men want to stand around <laughs> watching people. It's just a guy thing. We've all done that. I don't know how many construction sites I've come across, uh, either walking around. Or, I mean, that's just a common thing that men do. But regardless, maybe he was actually trespassing. Even if he was, still doesn't matter. Even if he was criminally trespassing, there's still no crime here because that would have been a misdemeanor. A citizen's arrest has to be a felony. And so on two different accounts, what they did, what we just saw transpire on that video, it doesn't pass the smell test of what constitutes a citizen's arrest. And this same guy, Tucker, also tried to give this explanation of what was going on here and why he leaked this video. He said to the New York Times, quote, it wasn't two men with a Confederate flag in the back of a truck going down the road shooting at a jogger in the back. 
Well, no, that's certainly true. And maybe that would make it look worse, but at the end of the day, it's really not any different. Like, regardless of what they were trying to do, they straight up murdered the guy. And whether they shot him in the back with no warning, or they said, hey, we want to talk to you, and start threatening the guy, that's the one acting in self-defense. Aubrey's the one acting in self-defense. Because like I said, if, if that same situation happens to me and I'm out for a jog, which would never happen because I don't jog out, but if that same situation were to happen to me, I do exactly the same thing this kid did. He was the one acting in self-defense. The other guys are the aggressors. And so the maybe there was a racial motivation in there. I don't know. I can't see into these guys and maybe we'll find out down the road that there absolutely was racial motivation. Whether the guys had a Confederate flag on their truck doesn't make them racist or not racist. And even if they were racist, whether they did it because he was a black kid or whether they did it because they really did think that he was trespassing, either way, they were in the wrong. They killed him. Doesn't matter whether they were racist or not. And so I don't understand how any rational person could think that this somehow helps them out because... This is ultimately the reason that I don't think hate crime should even be a thing on the books because ultimately it doesn't really matter what the motivation is. If you killed the guy, you killed the guy. And so maybe these guys were hood-wearing clan members and maybe they didn't have a racist bone in their body. They just thought this guy was a criminal and handled it the absolutely wrong way. I think that one definitely paints them in a worse light. It's definitely more disgusting to do so because you don't like the guy because of his skin color. But ultimately, what they did doesn't matter. Whether they killed this kid because he was black or him being black had nothing to do with it, it's still a hate crime. Because you have to have criminal apathy for human life to treat a person like this, regardless of what color of their skin is. And I do think that one thing that we all need to remember is that even if race did play a factor in it, and it may very well do it, there's nothing racist about asking that question. Because when you go forward with something like this, saying, well, I don't know, maybe it was racist, maybe it wasn't, that doesn't make you a racist. That doesn't make you covering for racist. Because even if it turns out they were, asking the question, there's nothing wrong with that. And frankly, I think that it's a good question to ask. I really genuinely want to know whether they were or not. I think that it's interesting, but I don't think it affects the, the fact that they killed this guy. The fact that they murdered him, and what's really sad about this is that whether it was racially motivated or not, these guys probably would have gotten away with murder had it not been for their bumbling lawyer. I mean, if this thing does not get to the national story that it is, if this thing doesn't rise to the level and, and this video doesn't come out showing the blatant disregard for human life that this video shows, sadly, there's a good chance that this guy never sees justice. There's a good chance that these guys get off scot-free. And that should be terrifying to every American. A mishandling of justice anywhere is a mishandling of justice everywhere. <laughs> My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.